On today's episode, brand new Cybertruck parts are spotted at Giga Texas, while prototypes make public appearances, Tesla's big China recall is not what it seems, and Elon visits Samsung's US research labs for a potential semiconductor deal. This past week has seen exciting reveals for Tesla's Cybertruck that seem to point to how close we are to seeing the first production models from Giga Texas. The very first Giga casted frame pieces have been spotted. The stack of what appears to be castings of the front frame of the Cybertruck were seen around the south side of the building on May 14th. We again have avid drone photographer Joe Tetmeyer to thank for these shots, as well as a May 10th sighting of what looks like a gigantic stamping machine being delivered to the site. The big stamping component seen in Joe's image from the 10th is likely part of the production line that cuts and stamps out the large stainless steel body panels of the Cybertruck. A sign that Tesla is close to completing their manufacturing line maybe, but not related to those frame parts Joe spotted as well. Because the truck's frame parts aren't stamped, they are casted in those now famous 9,000 ton gigapress machines from Italian manufacturer Idra. Tesla has recently acquired a second of these gigantic presses, the crates for which were spotted being delivered to Giga Texas in late April. But there have been cases of mistaken identity before. The Tesla community is on the edge of its seat when it comes to news about the Cybertruck, and that tends to cause some assumptions to lead pieces like the Model Y casted frames to be misidentified as Cybertruck parts. This time, however, Tesla themselves have given us a way to positively identify these castings from May 14th as the genuine article. During the company's first quarter 2023 earnings call, Tesla showed off their pilot Cybertruck manufacturing line at their Fremont plant in California. We got to see a particularly clear view of the truck being put together, including a look at the front frame. And when we compare that to those castings on the wooden pallets in Joe Tetmeyer's drone footage, we see that they match pretty well. This, more than anything, clues us into how close Tesla is to making their first Cybertruck at Giga Texas. Castings hanging out at this location means that the company has at least one of its 9,000 ton gigapresses up and running, or at least up and operating. Like any other fine instrument, the gigapresses will need to be calibrated before going into production for real, and that's likely what these are, practice casts. We know that Tesla's first gigapress from IDRA was being constructed back in January and should be ready for calibration by now, unless something has happened to that equipment that we're not aware of. But certainly, Tesla wouldn't be practically advertising how far along the process they are if they were having trouble with their machinery. They know the drone operators are out there, and having these castings sitting by an open door like that has to have been a choice to subtly let us know that the Cybertruck is still on track to start production in the summer. But Tesla has been much less subtle with recent appearances of their pickup in public. Prototypes continue to be spotted in the wild, operating on roads from California to Texas, and of course at Tesla's groundbreaking event for their lithium factory in Corpus Christi on May 8th. CEO Elon Musk reportedly drove the vehicle out onto the stage for the event, which gave a chance to show off what looked like an equipment rack that held a shovel. That rack certainly could have been for show, but we know from the Investor Day event on March 1st that Tesla now has an in-house design team whose entire job is to think up and create peripherals for the Cybertruck. Seeing a prototype being shown off with a new piece of equipment is one way to show off how far the team has come, but there was still more. Later that day, a couple of Tesla execs took that truck out for a trip on the unfinished side for fun. Drew Baglino, senior VP of powertrain and energy engineering at Tesla, had a great time getting the vehicle dirty, but whoever drove it after him got the vehicle stuck in some mud. Four-wheel drive or not, if you don't have mud tires on, you're gonna get a vehicle stuck. But one thing's for sure, if Tesla thought the truck wasn't ready for this sort of treatment, if they thought they could be at all embarrassed by an equipment malfunction or something like that, there's no way they would have allowed these test drives to happen. So it's a mark of confidence. Don't get us wrong, those castings are a way more solid indication that production could start within the next month or so, as Tesla has planned, but the extra risks they're taking with Cybertruck lately make it seem like they are in a good place with their preparations for this summer's production run. Tesla was in the media spotlight last week as Chinese authorities announced on May 12th 
that they had issued the recall of over 1 million Tesla vehicles for a safety hazard regarding the company's regenerative braking system. This has led to a debate over the terminology used because this recall is more like a feature update and is being handled with an over-the-air change to Tesla software. Nothing worse than what happens to your video game every couple of weeks. Tesla's regenerative braking system works by allowing the onboard computer to increase the resistance of the electric motor when the accelerator pedal is released. The computer's algorithm decides how much resistance to use, and the car can be slowed without even using the wheel's brakes, extending their lifetime, as well as using the energy from engine braking to keep the charge up on the vehicle's battery. Tesla originally had two options, low and normal, with the low option relying more on the driver to brake manually as the engine resistance would be lower. Tesla began removing this option in late 2020 as it was less efficient than the normal setting, but had announced that they were preparing to reintroduce the low setting back in April. It just wasn't quite soon enough to stop the recall, it seems. The recall notice is worded as you might expect, describing the problem as a safety issue as drivers used to the previous system might misjudge the operation of their accelerator pedals. Everything seems normal here. China is using the recall system in a similar way to the US or Europe. It's the legal framework they have for this sort of thing, so they use it. Obviously, Tesla critics have been having a field day. Media outlets like Bloomberg have been reporting what is essentially a software update as a major recall, and not much more context is added to the conversation than that. But if anyone thinks this is being done because China has something against Tesla, they only need to look at their recent history. Not only has Giga Shanghai been one of the most productive facilities in the company, but Tesla recently announced the construction of a second Megapack factory in the same area, with the Chinese government supporting the construction. And on the same day as the recall announcement was made, the Shanghai Municipal Commission of Economy and Informalization announced their endorsement for Tesla's full self-driving program in their province. If China was wary of Tesla's safety record, they have a funny way of showing it. A recall notice for over 1 million vehicles is extremely eye-catching, and even more so when you hear the issue involves brake safety. But context is king, and not only will Tesla have this update pushed to all their vehicles in China soon, but none of the recalled cars will have to see the inside of a Tesla service center for this. Tesla CEO Elon Musk had a meeting with Samsung's executive chairman Lee Jae-yong on May 11th. While the Samsung exec was stateside and from the agenda, it looks like Tesla is searching for a partner to help with semiconductors. The Thursday meeting was held at Samsung Semiconductor Research and Development Labs in California. The meeting was private, but reportedly included discussions about a potential partnership for Tesla's autonomous driving and semiconductor production. It certainly wouldn't be the first time Tesla and Samsung have worked together. The Korean electronics giant has previously provided camera hardware for the EV company, and they've even developed semiconductor chips for Tesla's FSD systems before. That makes them pretty ideal partners for a new batch of hardware, even if Tesla has made great leaps with their own processing hardware since their AI Day presentation in 2022. It could be that Tesla isn't quite ready to use their own chips yet, or they need help manufacturing them. Regardless, this meeting with Samsung seems to just be the first signs of Tesla looking for a partner in this arena. Just last November, it was reported that Taiwanese Semiconductor Manufacturing Limited were in talks with the EV maker to supply 4 and 5 nanometer hardware for Tesla's newest iteration of their full self-driving computer, which Musk mentioned would be debuted with the Cybertruck. With production of the new vehicle potentially less than a month away, it seems a bit late to be looking for chip suppliers, but as full production of the Cybertruck isn't planned until next year, it's possible Tesla intends on using current hardware until then. Samsung seems like the obvious choice here given their familiarity with Tesla and the FSD systems, but we'll just have to wait and see who Elon goes with. It is exciting to see progression on that new FSD computer hardware though, with Elon's recent comments on the end-to-end -end AI being introduced in version 12 of the FSD program, it seems that Tesla has been leaping forward with their tech lately. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. 
You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.